All right, so in the previous video, we introduced this concept of the reduced density matrix. And we said that if we have, for example, a system composed of subsystems, let's call them A and B, we said that if this two subsystems are entangled, well, we can describe this whole system with a state vector psi that cannot be expressed as a product of two separate states that represent A and B independently. But what we did say was that if we look at the density matrix of the whole system, let's call it row AB, which is just given by the outer product of the state psi with itself, we can find state representations, row B and row A, that give us information about the statistics of how each of these subsystems behave when we perform measurements. And we said that these are called the reduced density matrices. And we gave an example where Alice and Bob were sharing an entangled state and Bob wanted to get the statistics of the qubit he had without knowing that his state was entangled with, with Alice. And we derived empirically what that row B was for, for Bob, but we didn't really give a prescription of how this can be done in general. We, we did mention that the definition for, for you know, row A is the partial trace over B of our total state row AB, and for the reduced density matrix B is the partial trace over A of the system row AB. But we didn't give a formal definition for what this partial trace is. So that's what we're gonna do here in this video. So let's let's first define for subsystem A a set of orthonormal states, let's call them phi sub u, with u going from zero to n. And and these states form a basis. So we, we've said this before, for example, for one qubit. If we select the computational basis, that will be states zero and one. But uh, this could be any any basis. It could be state plus and state minus. Uh, for two qubits, this will be you know state zero zero, zero one, one zero, one one, and so on and so forth. So this capital N here is given by 2 to the N minus 1, where this lowercase n is the number of qubits in subsystem A, right, in A. And now let's say that for subsystem B, we have another set of orthonormal states, let's call them high sub V, with V going from zero to M. And this M doesn't have to be same as N, right? It's a different subsystem. So this capital M will be two to the M minus one, where the lowercase M is the number of qubits in B. So with this, we can now give the definition for what the reduced density matrix for subsystem A and subsystem B is using this operation of the partial trace. So let's first write down the equation for it and then try to make sense out of it. So uh, for subsystem A, we have row A, which is given by the partial trace over B of row AB, is given by the sum for V from zero to M. So we're summing over all of the states of this basis on subsystem B of the identity matrix of our system A tensored with each of the eigenstates of subsystem V, so high sub V, and then apply to rho AB. And here on the right, we just have the same thing, but with the ket of high sub V. So let's, let's make a couple of assumptions to try to simplify this and try to make sense out of it. So our first assumption is going to be that row AB is a pure state. And, um, and this, this generalizes for mixed states too. We're just gonna make this assumption to make things easier. So basically what this means is that row AB 
It's just the outer product of some state psi with itself, right? And then our second assumption is going to be that the state psi is uh, separable. And what that means is that we can write psi as a product of some state A tensored state B, where the state A corresponds to the description of subsystem A, and this corresponds to the description of subsystem B. And again, this is just an assumption for now, but this equation generalizes for uh, entangled states as well. So with these two assumptions, let's rewrite this expression here, rho A as, let's just copy and paste it so we don't have to rewrite the whole thing. And we can just replace this rho AB with the outer product of psi with itself, right? And then if we just focus first on this part, of our system, let's just focus on this half of it. Well, we can write that as the identity on A tensor with the bra of high sub V applied to, and since we said this state is separable, we're gonna say this is applied to state A tensor state B. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, it means we are applying an identity matrix to state A. So we're leaving state A al alone, right? So we have A. And then what are we doing here on the, on the second part of it? We're doing the inner product of B with this eigenstate high sub V. So we can write that as inner product of high sub V with B. But what is this? What is the inner product of some arbitrary state B with an eigenstate of the system it belongs to? Well, this is just basically the probability amplitude of measuring that state high sub V, right? So now if we combine that with the second part of this equation, right? So this is, let, let's call this part one, let's label it one and this part two, and what we did here is part one. And then part two is just gonna be the same, right? Well, here we have the bra of psi, which is basically the bra of A tensor the bra of B, right? And then the identity of system A tensor with the K of high V, right? And this is just gonna be, well, the bra of A. And then here what we have is the inner product of B sorry, of B with this eigenstate high sub V. But what is this? Well, this right here is equal to the inner product of high sub V with B complex conjugate. So basically this is just alpha V complex conjugate. So if now we combine all of this, we get rho of A is equal to the sum for V zero to M of A, right? Let, let's just focus on, on part one of the system. We had A times alpha sub B. And then for the bra part of it, we have here bra of A times the complex conjugate of alpha sub V. And this is just equal to Since these two are numbers, I can just rearrange them. And when we multiply the two of them, we just get the probability of measuring uh, state high sub V times the outer product of A. But since we're summing over all possible eigenstates of subsystem B, right? We're summing from V equals zero to M, and we're summing up all the probabilities of occurrence, well, that sum is just going to be equal to one. So all we have proven here is that this rho A is equal to the outer product of A with itself, which by definition, that is the density matrix of uh, subsystem A if the systems are separable. Then the takeaway message is that when we apply this definition of the partial trace over subsystem B, to obtain the density matrix rho sub A, what we've done is, well, we've applied an identity to subsystem A, leaving it alone, 
and we have averaged out subsystem B or traced out subsystem B. Now, as we said, we made some assumptions here, and, and the more important one is that we assumed that the, the state was separable. But this can be extended to any type of state, even an entangled state. Why? Why is that? Well, because we can define any entangled state of two uh, subsystems as the sum over u from 0 to n and then v from 0 to m of some probability amplitudes alpha uv of the basis states of each of these two subsystems. So phi sub u tensored with every single hi sub v, right? So by linearity, if we apply the definition of this uh, partial trace to this type of state, we're going to be averaging out every component of subsystem B, and what we're going to be left with is a sum of items that contribute to just uh, subsystem A. So we're not going to do the general derivation here. If you're interested, let me know, and I'll add a, a bonus video where we go through all the math of how, how this can be done. The, the important takeaway is that the partial trace is removing all the information from subsystem B and leaving just the portion of subsystem A. Now let's also write down the derivation for the density matrix for subsystem B. So let's copy um, the one we had for rho sub A, just so we have them together, paste it down here. And then for subsystem B, the reduced density matrix rho sub b is given by the trace over a of rho a b and that's given by the sum and now for u from 0 to n of well the bra of phi sub u tensored with the identity matrix on subsystem b right that over rho a b and then on this side we have the ket of phi sub u tensor with the identity matrix over system B. And it's the same concept, it's just now we're doing it, um, we're, we're averaging or tracing out on A and leaving an identity on B. Now the other assumption we made was that the system was pure, but again by linearity we can show that if the, the state is a mixed state, well we're just going to have an ensemble of pure states that are weighted by some classical probabilities and we can show that this definition works the same way. So what I want to do next is go over a few examples so we can make this definition a bit more concrete and see how it works.